So the easiest way to look at acids and bases is probably to start with the pH scale, which looks a little bit like this. So this is a fairly generic pH scale. You can see it goes from 0, the left-hand side, right across to 14. The thing with acids and bases is they are, they are terms that are used to describe substances. Now, acids normally, and you can see from a few of these, acids normally have the term acid in the title. So carbattery acid might be a sulfuric acid, for example, stomach acid, hydrochloric acid, vinegar, ethanoic acid, citric acid in lemon juice, etc., etc. So you can tell often if something is an acid because it'll have acid in its name. The same isn't really true for alkalis. You can't really tell as easily um, that they are alkalis just by the name alone. But neither of those things really help, particularly if you are uncertain as to if something hasn't got a name on it. It's, a, it's an unknown solution um, as to whether it will be acid or alkali or indeed neutral. So the pH scale is a really, really useful thing. As I say, 0 through to 14. You can see that acids are everything that have a pH that is less than 7. Alkalis are everything that have a pH that is greater than 7. And key thing is here, round to neutral, we've got pH 7. This is a general pH scale, and they tend to normally have this type of colouring, which goes sort of rainbows, red, orange, yellow, green in the middle here, neutral, right through to blue, sort of indigo -y violet, purple colour across the right hand side. And this colouring comes essentially from the use of an indicator, specifically universal indicator. Now, this is a substance which, when added to an acid, for example, will give us a colour, depending on the pH, that will range from a red through to an orange to, to, to a yellowy, slightly greenish colour, but not a true green, because that would be neutral. If we added the universe indicator to an alkali, it would give us a bluey-green colour right through to a purple colour, uh, depending on the pH, going up to 14 in this case. So universal indicator can be used to test an unknown solution for its pH. You would use a printed pH scale and you would compare the colour that appears when you add universal indicator to the solution to the colour on the scale. Because often solutions in chemistry are actually colourless. You could, if you wish to choose as well, you wish to find out the pH of a solution, you could use a pH probe. They're a little bit more fiddly, but they will give you a much more accurate value and it would normally have some sort of digital reading where you put it into your solution and it would tell you that its pH is 1.2 or its pH is 8.3 or whatever it be. So much more accurate, but a little bit more tricky to use. The universe indicator is very easy, drop it in, look at the colour and you'll get a rough idea of whether it's acid or alkali. So now hopefully we know that these acids and alkalis, they go from a pH of 0 through to 14. They can exceed these, these extremes, but that's generally what we would say, pH from 0 through to 14. But what actually are they? What are acids and what are bases and or alkalis? And I'll come on to the differentiation between that in a second. So acids are substances, as mentioned up there, acids have a pH which is less than 7. This is true when they are aqueous, so they are in an aqueous solution. The perhaps more difficult bit here is that also release hydrogen ions, H plus ions. Now this is not higher content, this is still foundation across the board. So they release hydrogen ions in solution. On the other hand, alkalis or bases really. Bases are essentially the opposite of acids. They react with acids and they neutralize them, which we'll come on to in a separate video. Alkalis are simply soluble bases. So bases that have dissolved in water. And so we would form an aqueous solution. And in that case, we would end up with a pH that is greater than seven if it is an alkali. And just like acids release H+, these release something else called OH-, and that is the hydroxide ion. So acids release H+, plus ions, hydrogen ions, whereas alkalis release OH- ions, hydroxide ions, in each case when they're dissolved in water. Now we can use, perhaps to make it a little bit more confusing, but it certainly highlights what's going on. We can use equations to show this, particularly from the acid point of view. So we could say that hydrochloric acid, when it's in solution, what we find is it splits into H plus and Cl minus. So there it is, it's releasing an H plus ion. 
another acid, nitric acid, same thing happens. We get H plus ions, and in this case we get the nitrate ion produced as well. Another acid, sulfuric acid, all of these commonly used in schools. Here we would use 2H plus, just to balance this up because it's H2, and we'd also produce the sulfate ion. All of these show how in solution the acid releases hydrogen ions. And we call this process here ionizing. So the acid ionizes to produce ions and essentially it splits in two. Each one is splitting in two. Now this is where it takes on the higher content because these here are examples of acids which have completely ionized. So what I mean by that is this HCl, this hydrogen chloride here, it breaks up completely into H plus and into Cl minus. And that means that these are strong acids. On the other hand, we could have something like ethanoic acid, which is just vinegar. And we would find that this splits up not completely. So we would say that it partially ionizes in solution. So what that means, if we were to compare this and this, same concentration, you would find that more H plus would come off this substance, the HCl, because it is completely breaking up than if we had the CH3COOH, the ethanoic acid, it would only break up into some H+. To give you an idea, if there were about a thousand of these, only around about something like four, I think it is, would break up into the CH3COO minus and the H+, plus, so much less. And in that case, we call this weak. Now, the simple way to understand whether an acid, the ionization that's occurring, is strong or weak is look for the arrow. If we have an arrow which is just pointing one way, we know it is a strong acid. And the same is true of alkalis as well. We know it's weak, however, if it has the double-headed reversible arrow. Okay, And that is it is weak. So just to very quickly go back to this pH scale that we had before, what we can see here now is that we can start to apply this term strong and weak to the pH scale as well. And we find that at the end, we have our strong acids and strong alkalis. And as we move into the middle, we move into the weak regions. And then in the very middle, of course, we have this neutral portion there. Now the term pH, and this is still higher content, the term pH actually, well, the way the pH works is it is a measure of the concentration, I'm going to abbreviate that concentration like that, of hydrogen ions. But what we would say is it's an inverse scale. So the higher the pH equals low hydrogen ions, and completely the opposite, a low pH means we've got lots of hydrogen ions. And the reason for that is simply how it's calculated. And for those that are interested, and this is not GCSE, the way to calculate pH is it is the minus log of the hydrogen ion concentration. Now that is very much A level, okay? But if anyone's interested, that is the reasoning for it. So it's an inverse scale though, is the simple way to think of it. So the higher the pH, the lower the hydrogen ion concentration, and the complete opposite, the lower the pH, the higher the hydrogen ion concentration. So that means up this end, we have lots of H+. Plus. Down this end, we have less H+. Plus. That's how that works. And what they also have brought into the GCSC now is a little bit of understanding, which isn't tying completely into this, but it's sort of bridging GCSC and A level. And if I was to have a, a sort of, if I had a small section of the pH scale, so here I've got a little tiny section of the pH scale where I've got pH 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now remember what I said, over this end we have lots of H+, and down this end we have less H+, over this end. Now what we find is that as we go up a pH unit, up a pH unit, up a pH unit, the concentration of hydrogen ions 
goes down by a factor of 10 each time we jump across. And the complete opposite is true going the opposite way. We go up by a factor of 10. So hydrogen ions go up by 10. Hydrogen ions go up by 10. And hydrogen ions go up by 10. That means moving from a pH of 3 to a pH of 0, we actually have 10, 10, 10, 1,000 times more hydrogen ions. And the complete opposite is true. If we would go from a pH of 0 to a pH of 3, we would have 1,000 times less. And we could do the same. We could go from pH 3 to 1 or whatever. This applies right the way th up through to 14. This is perhaps one of the more difficult parts of this. Um, but as I said before, it is bridging the gap slightly between GCSE and A-level. And the very, very final thing uh, I want to talk about uh, quite briefly are the terms dilute and concentrated and strong and weak. So in the big wide world, people tend to use the term strong um, when in chemistry would you would use the term concentrate. And a good example of that is if, if someone asks you basically for how strong uh, you like your drink, how strong you might like a glass of squash. The stronger the squash is, the more cordial, the more squash stuff and the less water there is and vice versa. Now, in chemistry terms, that would mean concentrated because in chemistry terms, dilute and concentrate uh, yep, are just opposite terms. Dilute means not a lot of stuff. Concentrated means lots of stuff. So this is a measure of stuff in a volume. Whereas the term weak and strong is specifically used to measure as previously mentioned, the ionization or the splitting of the acid or the alkali. Weak means it's partially, not completely ionized. Strong means it is completely ionized. Those are important terms. And you will sometimes find that you could have a dilute strong acid or in fact you could have a weak a uh, concentrated weak acid. A concentrated weak acid would be incredibly bad and it would burn you very, very, very badly. A dilute strong acid would not burn you at all. So that's acids and bases, right from what those things are, the pH scale, a little bit about indicators, right through to some of the higher content uh, of some of the calculation aspect of pH and hydrogen ion concentrations.